People of Honor Creek have questions, and so do you. And you're all demanding answers. Baba22 says, Dang, you ended up with the Dollar General version of Carol Baskins as your neighbor. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Instead of tigers, it's tortoises and turtles. But let's get to a real question. All right, somebody wants to know, is this Lynette and John Crook's next bathroom project? It very well may be. No, seriously, let's get to a real question about Otter Creek. Because, all right, here we go. Mark WemYSS4188 has a question right there, okay? Mark's got a question. Watching the video you show with the old council, why is it that Don is always grinning like a cat and thinks everything is funny, or is he just spaced out all the time? Here's what we can tell you. We know Don has former charges, and we know those former charges are for controlled substances. And in our best estimate, Don is on those substances while he's at the actual meetings. Now, we don't know that 100% for sure. We're not there administering them. We're not there witnessing himself administering them. But you see symptoms of things all the time, right? You have cause and effect. Cause, there's some substances being taken. Effect, ah, you know, things along those lines. Or all of a sudden shouting out, Who the bills and the paper? Rock. DKB says, man, those moles are sophisticated. They know how to hack Instagram. Here I thought they're just cool little creatures that spent a life burrowing in the ground. Paranoia much, Lynette? Your conspiracy theory and ludicrous nonsense about having a secret plot against Jeremy and Otter Creek says much more of your immaturity and your stupidity. All right, DKBs, let's get into this. Lynette is now claiming that her Instagram account has been hacked, and that's how we've been gaining information. Well, let's back up a little bit. This is not the first time Lynette has actually claimed that she's been hacked. As a matter of fact, she had a tortoise that was dying, and she, she went on. We have screenshots of all of this, okay? She went on with her talk to text, thinking she was talking to John, talking about the tortoise is going to die just like the other one did. George, do you remember word for word? I do have the screenshot. She did say, um, I don't want to say this out loud, but George may die of a r upper respiratory infection like the other two tortoises did. Okay, now here's the funny part. She's so foolish, she had no clue that didn't go to John. That was publicly posted on Facebook. On her turtle rescue. Her turtle rescue page of all places. And then she backpedals and starts to post that a YouTuber hacked her account. Okay, well, I can confirm that this YouTuber... You know what, I'm not going to confirm or deny anything. But I will confirm that that post was of her own stupidity. Now that she definitely has moles, and she now is acknowledging she definitely has moles, she's making up stories. Well, my Instagram got hacked. All right, George, do the moles communicate with Lynette through Instagram or Facebook? From what I can tell and from what I've observed, the moles all communicate with her through Facebook. Okay, and Lynette communicates with them through Facebook. Her Instagram account has absolutely nothing to do with any of the moles. Her Instagram account was public at one point in time. And then when we called CPS on her and told her of all the outlandish things she was posting on social media, that's when she changed the setting from public to private. Pamela has a question as well. Believe it or not, it's not about Ida Creek and it's not about Lynette. It's... Out of all the toys, I'm curious, does your house have dust? If so, do you empty the shells and dust off each day? There are a ton of shells. And fortunately, how much dust do we get? Not a whole lot of dust. Not really. I do not know of any shelf we've actually ever emptied and mm -hmm. dusted. Not yet. But if we did need to get to that point, it'll either be myself, Patience, or Christian So do the dusting. As she says that, hey, Patience or Christian... We do have patients and Christian help quite a bit to actually maintain the house. So at one point, we were going to hire a full-time cleaner. 
And there's sometimes we have heavy workload with Christian and patience, and there's sometimes we have a light workload with Christian and patience. So between the four of us or the three of them, because usually I'm editing, I'm constantly editing. That seems to be majority of my life anymore. Um, then somehow, some way, it all gets cleaned off. But I don't know of a single shelf that's ever been cleaned off or anything on it dusted. We don't really seem to have that issue living here for the year and a half. Desert Dragon Works says, I have no words. Probably because Lynette used them all at once. Yeah, well, let's face it, guys. Uh, she's probably hit that point of menopause in her life because we all know there ain't no period in that either, right? So, Desert Dragon Works, you got it all there. She's using every single word, mumbles it, jumbles it, throws it all together. Do you think there's any wisdom in what she's doing whatsoever? She's a reactor. She is not a thinker. She claims she's smart. At one point, I think... She even claimed that she graduated early, right? Because she was so smart or went to college at a young age. Went to college or was one of the top in her class. There's a difference between being book smart and there's a difference between having common sense. Common sense is not on the scale for her. She may be book smart, but common sense is, from what I have absorbed, doesn't exist. Okay, but there's also an extreme difference between telling the truth and constantly lying. I do not believe for one moment she graduated early, went to college early, or anything along those lines. From what I've observed, she is one of the most ignorant, foolish people I've ever met. Lily Bates wants to know, isn't cyber stalking like a pretty serious crime? Can you get that restraining order in Ohio? I hope so. These people are nuts. These people are beyond nuts. Who in their right mind stalks YouTuber couple, buys property across the street from them, and attempts to get money from them, and then is upset when they don't? So, yes, it can be a very serious crime. Remember, crimes and the consequences of them differ in all states. So, you've got federal law, and then state law, then you've got county law, and for Otter Creek, you even have county resolutions and ordinances. So you got multi -layer layers there in laws and the crimes and the consequences of such. Some states lean way heavier on things than other states. So for example, in Ohio, they lean very, very, very heavy on that. In Florida, it just doesn't seem to matter. You gotta have two documented criminal offenses that they were actually charged against to get any kind of restraining order. In Ohio, they give them out like candy. Thankfully, Halloween is coming up. I'm gonna dress up as John Crook. What are you dressing up as? I have no idea, no idea. Ah, whatever it is, I'm sure it's gonna be messed up. Nadine says, Lynette and Mr. Crook's property, the property tax is only listed in John's name. And according to the website, the taxes are current now. You are correct, except the first part. It's actually listed 50% in Lynette's name, 50% in John Crook's name. But that's just the property. Here's the best part of it all. They do not own the mineral rights. Who in their right mind buys a piece of property without owning the mineral rights. So right now you're going, okay, Jeremy, I don't, I don't understand. Or maybe you do. Just so everybody understands, let's explain it. Mineral rights are anything below ground. Could be gold, could be oil, could be gems, could be artifacts. So for example, at our Florida ranch, we own the mineral rights. I would never in a million years buy a piece of property that I own, don't own the mineral rights on. And that just goes to prove how foolish they were and how lack of, of intelligence they have in purchasing property. They just thought we were gonna come in and save the day for them financially, which they never got a penny from us, ever, thankfully. We own all of our mineral rights. They don't own any of them. Do you wanna take a guess who's in the midst right now trying to buy them? Patrick wants to know, how the hails have you kept a calm head on your shoulders over all of this? I know you're doing it the right way. Patrick, 
I mean, complete and total transparency with you. Everything with Otter Creek, everything with Bad Neighbors, we laugh. I mean, it, it is it is like real life comedy. How often do we laugh daily about it? We do laugh about it. It's but, serious. But in reality, but, how I handle it is through prayer because I am terrified to go back to ter- to Otter Creek, especially when we have to drive past their property from the schoolhouse to our ranch we have to drive past their property there's no other way around it and so but whose mineral rights do we have to drive past we have to drive past right now it's in limbo right it is in limbo so a lot of what we do is we laugh about it now george is very very clear in that she's terrified these two are completely and totally unstable they have ruined their lives and the lives of people around them in multiple states. They go into a place, they suck it dry, they ruin everybody around them, and then they call and claim victim bullying as they run to the next place. So we are just one place on the end destination of where they will end up. And frankly, we also know in the long run, they will not maintain there. They cannot financially and nor will they ever be financially able to maintain life on that piece of property. They're, they're in, right now, as we speak, there's, there's, I could think of five laws that they're breaking. And you go, okay, well, you got all these laws, who's gonna enforce it? Well, as a very unwise person likes to say often, and then never follows up with it, stay tuned. But. I do want to clarify, we use the better part of wisdom. We actually will follow up with all of it. Gail wants to know, can we file harassment charges against John Crook and says that's just gross. Well, there's no doubt about it. John Crook is extremely gross. The vulgar things that he has said about my anatomy, the vulgar things he has said about his anatomy with George, it's beyond a point of uh, gross it's appalling it is harassment there's no doubt about it so you say Jeremy you're not saying a specific word I'm not saying a specific word nor have said that specific word in the past on the channel because it is YouTube and we happen to understand how YouTube works and the guidelines and things that go along with YouTube so can we file yeah absolutely you also have to understand that that's going to carry weight in different states as well. We've kind of touched base on that already. One state's going to take it extremely serious. Another state's going to be lackadaisical about it. So can we file? Well, the answer is absolutely. We can file harassment charges. Now, in my opinion, you no, know, I'm going to ask George. Who's a, who do you think John Crook has harassed in that adult form more, me or you? At this point in, in the... St- at this point... He's obsessed with my backyard. Yes. And I ain't talking about the one at the end of my driveway. Definitely more so you. Literally obsessed with what's in my backyard. And listen, I get it. Well, my, not only that, why does an adult man need to tell another adult man to suck his privates? That's disgusting. In front of a three-year-old. Like, even in front of a three-year-old. Now, I get it. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. But uh, there are boys I don't want in the yard. As a matter of fact, that's why we have no trespassing signs. And yet he wants to continue to push that envelope. So you have harassment on the adult level, and then you have trespassing, and you're going to have a multiple, multiple list of other things as well. As well, Because cyber stalking has already been brought up. And in Florida, these things, they kind of just go in limbo. It's like, yeah, whatever. Wait till something serious happens. In Ohio, there is no plane. There is no joke. It's dealt with immediately before something extremely serious happens. I toe to toe with you any day. Are you supposed to be in a fucking gay fucking porn movie? Well, if I was, people would actually yeah. watch and listen. They don't listen to you. Old lady be jamming something up your ass. Moore's owner 56 says she's obsessed with what the hails. She can't quit thinking about you, even when you're away in your home in Ohio. How pathetic. Now, particularly, she's addressing the email to our local mayor. 
and in our local resident, where we have about 600 that live in our area. And yeah, you, there's no doubt she's absolutely obsessed. I mean, there's there's telling her grandson that her YouTuber friends are going to give him housing and a job. I mean, if that's not obsession, that never, ever, 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 ever was ever discussed. That conversation never took place, nor would it ever, because that's not how I roll at all. So is she obsessed? Absolutely. Is it a fatal attraction? Probably. But you're right. It is pathetic, even when we're away. Now, you may be on the other side of it and say, like Lynette did this morning. I think one of the moles was sharing with us. Lynette said that we're obsessed with her. Mm -hmm. Is that what happened? No, there's no obsession with her or her husband, ex-husband, paramour, whoever, whatever he is to her. The obsession is to protect the adopted child because those two have no business raising a child with the mental state that they're in and the financial state they're in. Not to mention they're also disabled trying to manage a tortoise rescue if that is if there even are tortoises and turtles remaining any longer in the rescue. She refuses to post updated pictures of her rescue and the animals that she has. Why do you think she does that? Think about it. All right, so the obsession from our point, if you even would call it an obsession, is number one, saving a child, okay? Number two, saving the town. The townspeople of Otter Creek are up to here with them. I mean, they're up, I'm, geez, I don't even, the conversations that I've had with the people of Otter Creek, her neighbors, the people around her, behind her, in front of her, beside her, uh, us, on the other side of town. And it is a very, very small town. They've had it. And you've seen parts of this in the town hall meetings. She literally has to run out. Why? She's running for her life. Why? Because she's afraid of the consequences from the things she said and the actions that she's made. So then she wants to claim, oh, they're bullying me. Oh, I'm a victim. How in the world does somebody get to the point in their life where they claim to be a victim and they're being bullied after she said the things she said about the people in the town, does the things that she's done to the people in the town, and she somehow still comes out on the other end and thinks that she's okay? The obsession that was saving the child, saving the people of the town, and the animals, if any of them even exist still. David George, 1664, says, What? Does anybody know what this crazy woman is saying? Maybe we could get a toddler to interpret. I mean, maybe somebody who speaks boo, boo, goo, goo, boo, hoo, hoo, maybe understands. I mean, birds of a feather flock together. These crazy women have literally flocked together. And there's, a, there's literally a handful of them. One, two, I can think of off the top of my head. One, two, three, four. I can think of four, five. I can think of five off the top of my head. It may take these mentally unstable individuals to actually interpret it for one another, but there's very, very much that we can't even comprehend. Although, remember, she claims to be of the higher intellect. She claims to be so smart, she graduated early. She went to college early. So maybe this is one of those things that it's just out of all of our league, the normal people, you and me, the normal people. We just can't understand her higher level of intellect, such a high level that you don't need grammar, syntax, punctuation, commas, periods. You don't need anything. You just put it all out, text to talk, talk to text, and then somehow, some way, magically, everybody somehow understands. I have one day to be of that higher intellect to not need punctuation. The Sneaky Bob says, Jeremy, could you maybe tell your followers that I'm crazy too? Would be great if I could get some more followers. Thanks in advance, sir. <laughs> All right. Sneaky Bob, you got it right on the head. Nobody would even be following her on any of her ridiculous pages if it wasn't for what the hail's bringing attention to it. And so in hindsight, I feel horrible that I actually have brought attention to it because there would be two people, three people, maybe four people on those pages right now. 
and she feeds off of the attention. It doesn't matter that it's negative attention. It doesn't matter that she literally spends all day fighting on the internet. All day. Her life and John Crook's life exist right now to fight on the internet. They love the attention. Now, I can also say that it's very minimal in the scale of life, right? So on, on her pages, she has under 1,000 followers, and 99.9999 of those are actually What the Hales followers. Even her closest allies are What the Hales followers acting as moles, okay? And then on other pages, you know, other people who have jumped on board going, well, I want my claim to fame, and I want a piece of this Otter Creek pie as well. It's very, very minute, very, very small. But what it definitely is as well is humorous. We've seen some of the funniest things we've ever seen in our life, right? I think a lot of the What the Hales fans and their sarcastic remarks to either her, John, or this joke list, it, it's pretty funny. It's, it's very funny if you have a sense of humor and you understand sarcasm. Yeah, no doubt about that. And... George and I have actually learned a lot about ourselves that we never knew because they are specialists in what the hails. Like, I never knew I had how many shell companies now, George? 200? 300? Well, according to Wikipedia, oh, she yes. found... Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Vic Wikipedia found how many shell she companies? She found a ton, but her forensic research... <laughs> Horrible. Oh, my goodness. So bad. Uh, Wikipedia does not have common sense, <laughs> all right? And we all know sense makes dollars. So you also know Wikipedia has got no dollars. So Wikipedia sits there at home all day trying to make up scenarios and stories that fit her own agenda and her own mind. So, you know, th that's the way things go sometimes. That's the way it goes. We've learned all kinds of things. What are some of the other things we've learned about ourselves? I was a pastor. That you lived in the state of Tennessee. Oh, Okay. Um, never, ever lived in the state of Tennessee. <laughs> never, ever was a pastor either. What are some other things we learned? Um, that you have a permanent restraining order from the ex-wife and the children, which isn't true. Okay, anything else? That you have a long rap sheet of speeding tickets. Oh! Oh, no! No, no. I like to go fast. No breaks. Take risk. Go figure. Oh, we've also learned. We've also learned that there was an also there was also another Jeremy Hales found in the, the state of Mississippi, which you've never lived in Mississippi before. Yes. With a long rap sheet. We've learned I like women. Shocking! <laughs> Absolutely shocking! Please, 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 please. Oh man, George, would you let well, them know I like women? What else is there? You are not, you're not, your you're name isn't... You're definitely not into men the way John Kirk is into men, but yes, you are attracted to the opposite sex, which is females. Okay, and um, and your name is not a male name, it's after your father, you right, are born so George, a female. So a lot of people that are new onto the channel, George is not a nickname. We've said this many times on the channel. So many times. George is my legal middle name, it's not an alias. And I go, I prefer to go by my middle name of George on the channel. Okay. So we've learned all kinds of new things about ourselves that we never knew. And then we have things about ourselves confirmed that we've always known. And um, the biggest shocker to you has been what? The biggest shocker? Yes. The biggest shocker. Ugh, I got to think on it. Keep thinking. Donna says, I don't understand what the outcome she was expecting by sending that email to your other mayor. Was she expecting, what was she expecting to happen for you to be kicked out of your town? Maybe. Um, as I, 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 I want to say, you know, when I say things, people take it out of context all the time, okay? But as one of uh, the town's members that can actually do a lot for the town and pays probably some of the most, uh, the biggest tax base in the town. And th this is just a guess. I don't know all 600. And I, I'm just guessing. I know what I pay in property taxes. And it is, in this area, it's huge. Okay, So comparative, 
with with Otter Creek. Otter Creek is this, and if you were to look at it on a scale, then here is this. Otter Creek to here. It's much higher. Extremely much higher. To the point of if if Lynette and John Crook ever tried to follow us here, they would never financially be able to do that. And that's not to say that something miraculous couldn't happen to where they come into a windfall of money because that has happened in the past. John was actually in a car accident with his ex-wife, got half a million, right? From what we found on public records, yes. Yep, burnt through. Motorcycle accident. Oh, okay, burnt through that pretty quick. But here you're looking at upwards of $50,000 an acre, okay? $50,000 an acre. Otter Creek, 2,500 to 3,000 an acre when we purchase. So that's the difference in land value here. So was she hoping to get us kicked out? Well, that's a good question. I think what she's hoping is just to try and make more Jeremy haters. Because remember, hated people hate people. Now I could say hurt people hurt people. Now, you also have to understand that she keeps saying, oh, Jeremy's only doing all this because hurt people hurt people. No, Jeremy's doing this because you're a horrific person. You're a horrible person. We let you get away with this for six months before saying anything or doing anything. And then you want to cry that you're being victimized and you're bullied. No, you're full is what you are. These are the consequences for what you did and what you got away with. And now you have to live with it every single day of your life. So what's her end goal? Probably to try and get some other people to hate us. But here's the thing, I don't care. My worth and my value doesn't come from a mayor who either likes me or doesn't like me. Now, am I friends with the mayor here? Yes, absolutely. Am I have friends with other mayors? Yes, absolutely. I have mayor friends, I have political friends, I have officer friends, I have auctioneer friends, I have pastoral, pastoral friends, I have all kinds of friends. I have Christian friends, unchristian friends, I have female friends, I have male friends, I have, you name it, I probably got Older it. friends. Whoa, whoa, what, we, older? <laughs> we don't discriminate when it comes to age. We have friends that are much older than us. Much, we much older. We have friends that are our age. We even have friends that are younger than us. Okay. We don't care of the race. We don't care of their age. We don't care of their gender. We... If we get along with people and we see that they are our friends, then we become friends with them. But we will not become friends with people such as Lynette and John. Because who, they're horrible people. Who flock and think that they can get promotion with their non-existing tortoise rescue and donations and whatever it is that she thought in her head the logical thing. I, I don't understand the logic in her head of why she moved there. All the money she's spending on the property that she overpaid for when she could have bought land with an existing home already versus all of this hassle that she's going through knowing that she's on disability and has back problems neck problems knee problems and can't do all this work on their own you would take the joy away from this woman of taking a john crook in a bucket outside and inside the shed like when she's got to go number two, when she's got to go John Crook, she gets to sit on a bucket. And then she can funnel stuff into her detergent bottle. You would take that joy away from her? George, come on. And was she trying to take joy away from us here at Hales headquarters? Listen, we can't mind read. I don't think anybody who actually isn't insane can understand the insane mind of an unstable person like Lynette. Who knows what she was trying to accomplish? What she did accomplish, the world is laughing at her. Sharon wants to know, has Lynette ever shared what her level of education is? Well, we've already touched on her education, but we have learned that she's a professional firefighter. We've learned that she's also a professional lawyer. We've learned that she's also a professional police officer. Uh, what other professions have we learned? She's um, an expert when it comes to the water in Otter Creek and how the water plant works. She's a water chemist. Yes. Yes, she's a water treatment chemist. Um, she's also a tortoise expert, even though they correct. keep dying in her care. Right. And she wants to shoot other animals on the property. She's an expert in what else? Oh, YouTube. I gotta think YouTube, about it. for sure. She's an expert in YouTube. 
She knows everything about YouTube, social media, you name it, Facebook, to the point where she even contacts. She goes, Facebook, reach out to me. I guess she thinks she has some kind of in with Mark. I guess her and Mark Zuckerberg are like this. She literally will post, Facebook, reach out to me. She literally will post to the residents in Otter Creek, this person, reach out to me. Do you think they reach out to her? No. You think her and Mark Zuckerberg are like this? She thinks she actually has an in with Facebook? How dumb do you have to think? How dumb and foolish are you to think that anybody at Facebook is just going to message you, reach out to you? Let alone what the hails is just going to message you, reach out to you. Do you understand we alone, probably today, 10,000 messages on all of our platforms. It's not humanly possible for us to even read them all, let alone to respond to any of them. And now she's reaching out to Facebook going, Facebook, reach out to me. Yeah, that'll be a cool day in Hales when that happens. Debbie says, why that's exhausting? And speaking of exhaustion, raising a small child is just that. How does she have so much time obsessing over anyone with a young child? Just saying. Boy, we would love, love to see her put the same amount of time into raising a child. We would love to see her put the same amount of time into bettering her property. We would love to see her put the same amount of passion and time into doing anything to better her life that she does on Facebook nonstop, literally nonstop. It's as if she lives for Facebook. And here's the worst part. As she's saying all these things, talk to text, and she claims little Harley can never leave her side. Who's hearing all of it, George? Oh, the child is hearing it all while she's glued to a screen on her tablet all day. So the reality is a tablet is raising the child while Lynette and John Crook are playing on Facebook all day. Don't you think at some point in your life, they're in their 60s now. Albeit, Lynette just the other day said, oh, I can't remember, am I 62 or am I 61? She can't remember if she's 62 or 61, but she knows everything about the law. She knows everything about everything else in the world, but she doesn't even know her own age. So, at some point in your 60s, don't you think you would get to a point in life to go, you know what? I need to actually get up and work. I need to get off of social media. I actually need to do something if I'm ever going to become something. I actually need to do something if this piece of property is ever going to become something. Apparently that hasn't sunken in yet. Starless Mystery says, is she on something? Seriously. That sounds like something someone's eating too much Adderall would say. It's like the kind of paranoid that they build up around this alternate reality of warring factions in their head. We are an army. You are the foe army. We're working on some big tactical plan to take you down. LOL. I just can't. Laugh emoji, laugh emoji, laugh emoji, laugh emoji. The answer is yes. She is heavily medicated. And here's the funny part. When CPS is being called on her and other agencies, she actually posted her her pee cup and the results of it. And what were the results? In the past, she has shared her urine results and literally posted it. She tested positive for opioids. two or three opioids was one, and I can't remember the name of the other one. I'll have to look back. Um, but it was. If you, if you paid attention to one of the pictures that she posted, it was taken at her home because there was a box right behind it with her address on it. And she's worried about us sharing her address, although she has a public turtle rescue, meaning that the turtles need to be rescued from her. Seriously, the turtles need to be rescued. So is she on something? Yes, she absolutely is. Now she's gonna tell you it's painkillers because she's disabled and she has no back disc and all of this. And yet, I never ever see her struggling to walk. I never ever see her struggling to stand. Uh, I see her carrying a three-year-old with no problem whatsoever. Again, we're at the point of 
truth versus a life of lies and living out a lie. Now, could there be back issues? Absolutely, I have back issues. You see me walk, and when I can't walk, I lay down. But I don't go on disability. I work nonstop. There are jobs you can work while you're sitting. There are jobs you can work while you're laying. There are things that you can do and be productive. No matter what your state is, how much pain you're in, you can do something, something. For her, it's posting pee pics. That's pretty pathetic if you ask me. All the information that she's put out there and she calls herself a victim. Yeah, she is. She's a victim of her own stupidity and her own foolishness. And in her mind, is there a war raging? Absolutely. She calls anybody and everybody an abuser. She calls anybody and everybody a bully. She's the victim of everybody and everything. She's anti-agency. She's anti-people. She's anti-everything. Yet John Crook is still on the property because he hasn't or she can't buy him out. She wants $65,000 from me and you to buy him out, to remove him from the property. Then what? She's just going to fight more on Facebook so even less gets done? Yeah, that, that's a real good plan right there. Remember, she moved the Otter Creek to save the child, and yet all she did was make life worse for her and all of her neighbors. Mike says, Instagram hacked? Yeah, right. She does this in every city, any town, anywhere she's been, conning people. Somebody's got to put a stop to it. We 100% agree with you, Mike. And so there are people that are going, Jeremy, uh, you've gone too far. No, I haven't. Maybe you think I have. She's still there. The child is still in danger. The townspeople are still in danger. The animals are still in danger. I haven't gone far enough. And it's just the beginning. Bats News TV said she's had so many careers. Pole dancer, stripper, church minister, turtle wrangler, professional stalker. You're missing a few. We told you about the firefighting, the law, the police. I mean, this woman, she knows it all. There's nothing that she hasn't done. She's that smart in her own mind. Moore's owner said Lynette was trying to blackmail your mayor with a fret, threat of releasing a video if he didn't contact her. He, she called three times. She said, I'm contacting the news if you don't contact me. She's now she's going to say that again. It made the, his, the mayor's admins scared because of the way she came at them over the phone. So harassment, yep. Threats, yep. Blackmail. Listen, anything we can add to this in the state of Ohio, we will be adding to it. This woman self-incriminates. And I gotta say, I'm not disappointed. I actually love it. I wish she would do more of it. The more she does, the sooner it ends. Skate Mom 46 says, does Don still have his ponytail? His man bun? We did show his man bun ponytail from 10 years ago. We flashed back to 2013 when Russell was actually fighting with the current council and trying to get everybody in town to sign the petition to unincorporate. Does Don still have it? We don't know. Maybe cut it off. Maybe it's in a little a little safety box, a little shadow window, a little who knows. It could be anywhere. It gets a little flow of the wind and it just like woo or make way to be like this woo flowing in the wind. Uh, what we think is really funny is if you look back 10 years, Don is no different. He is still no different. It is the blind leading the blind, the fools leading the fools, individuals who should never be put in a position of leadership. Steven says, I see Lynette is still trying and failing in basic English and grammar. Does Otter Creek have a village idiot competition? I'd vote for her all day if I could. Don't forget, she's going to be very busy soon getting ready for Halloween. Those broomsticks are not going to ride themselves. <laughs> so we currently do not have a competition in Otter Creek for the Village Idiot. We do have the town drunk, and there are two people who are tied for that. That would be Russ the Suss and John Crook, both of them known alcoholics. So, hmm, maybe we should have a yearly competition. Like, if we're going to do this Christmas gig for the town of Otter Creek, maybe we should give out Halsey's. You know, it's an award ceremony. We're going to give out yearly Halesies. Now, let's take Halesies out of it. We're gonna, they're they're going to be the otters. 
It's the Otters. That's what it is. Welcome to the annual Otters. And Russ the Sus will probably, and John Crook, be tied for first place for Town Alcoholic. And Lynette, no doubt, no doubt. Well, hold a second. You got Mary Mary as well. You have Mary Mary. Lynette, Mary Mary, Laura Mott, Village Idiot. I don't know. But I think at the Otters this year, Lynette almost has that one all tied up and ready to be packaged to her. She's going in for the win.